welcome each and every one of you to the English worship service of Chongdong First Methodist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Would you please arise for our greeting and call to worship. The Lord is with you. Let us start this service well by reminding ourselves that it is not we who chose Christ, that we are not here because of our goodness, that we are not here to enlighten ourselves, that we have not come to be entertained with heart, soul, mind, and strength. I silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Old Testament reading, Ecclesiastes 7.14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful, and then in the day of adversity, consent them. God has made one as well as the other, so that mortals may not find out anything that will come after them. The word of life. New Testament reading. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 to 11. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace told me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you, Shalom. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, our Lord and our Savior. And may you speak to us, either through me or in spite of me, but speak to our hearts. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I think if we look at the year that is ahead, I wonder what is our expectations of this year. Last week we spoke about this, and we said to ourselves, we need to turn the question around, and we need to ask, what is the year expecting of me? of us, not so much we expecting something from this year that we stand at the gate of this year, but what is the world, what is life, what is God expecting of me and of you this year? So change the question. And during the week I thought a little bit more about this. and. I was wondering if you think this year might be your best year ever. When I said this to the morning congregation, they were sort of looking at me stunned. How can you say that? Because we don't know what the year is going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen. But I've decided I want to make this year my best year. Because I can contribute something. I cannot give what I don't have. And then I ask myself, how on earth will you do that? So I say to myself, I've got these conversations with myself sometimes, I say to myself, well, you've preached last week about what does life expect of you and from you. And then there's something that came up this week that made me think of a second thing. And the second thing is that I want to discuss with you this afternoon and propose to you is if I want to make this year the best year, I have to deal with losses and with failures. So that's a very negative thing, right? Positive and negative. If I, when I read a, a text, um, there's an author and speaker, his name is Les Brown. And he had this to say, the good times we put in our pockets, the bad times we put in our hearts. And that's something that we carry with us from the previous year and from all the years before. We carry those, those losses, those failures, those disappointments in our hearts. Many people do. I don't know if you do it. I do it. And our joys and our winnings, we sometimes just carry that in our pockets and then we take off our, our jacket and we carry on. And these, these losses that we suffer, these failures, losses, failures, disappointments, those negative things, we put it in our hearts and it becomes rocks in our heart and our hearts are heavy. And we have a choice. We can either be the victim of our losses, the victim of the things that happened to us, or we can be the victors. And that is where I read of St. Paul, who says, in all these things, we have more than conquerors. A conqueror is a victor, right? The problem is with many of us, most of us, that we turn into the victim role very easy. And that is why we ask the question, what will this here bring to us? If we ask that question immediately, we, we position ourselves in the victim position. Things happen to us. 
We have no control over it. We, we are just receivers of whatever life uh, shoots at us. But if we stay in the position of a victim, it later becomes our identity. It becomes who we are. It defines us. Now, this is a very interesting thing. During last year, we look at, during our table talks, at certain models. And one of the models we looked at was the Karpan model. And I just want to show you this uh, quickly, just to bring you in the picture. There's the, the drama triangle. There are two triangles. And this Karpan triangle um, tells us about the position people take in um, when we are in a conflict, when we are somehow, uh, usually this is when we are in a conflict, when we are in a, in a disposition, and we, we take on one of these roles. The one is the victim role. You, you move through these three roles in any conflict, in any loss, in any situation that is sort of negative, you, 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 you move in that. But the default position of many people is that they become victims. In any triangle, you get the victim, you get the persecutor, usually the instigator, the, the bully, right? And you get the rescuer. And each one of us has these kind of, we have a default position. My default position is usually rescuer. I like to rescue people. I like to rescue anything. So one of the negative things that I, that I had to, 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 to deal with myself is to not be the, the quintessential rescuer. You want to rescue everything. But the rescuer needs a victim. The victim is a person who, when things happen, things happen to them. And then some people are the instigators, they are the persecutors, they are the, the bullies, they are the strong ones, they, 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 they sometimes make trouble, right? Now the problem is here, when we talk about what is this here going to bring to me, then immediately we go into the victim position. Usually when we suffer a loss, we go into the victim position. The world is happening, and I'm just there, I'm just sitting there, and what shall I do? I need a rescuer. But if I look at the Bible, there's also the other side, the other one, uh, the other triangle, the TD triangle, or the empowerment dynamic, that says, the victim can become a creator. And the bully can become a challenger, right? And also the, the rescuer can become a coach. It simply means this. Whenever somebody jumps in the water and is drowning, the rescuer jumps in and he gets him out. But the coach jumps in and he teaches him to swim. So that's just the, the, uh, the difference between that. Earlier this week, <clears throat> maybe you, some of you have read the book, but earlier this week I thought about the book by Prince Harry. And this book, the title of the book is Spare. And if you read it or you watch some of the videos about it, uh, for me it was, was quite interesting to look at it and to look at all the reactions to this book. But one thing that was certain to me, and I feel very sorry and I have pity on him, is that he takes on the position of the quintessential victim. All the losses, and sort of sort of helpless, and right about this. Whether you like it or not, whether you have sympathy or not, people have strong feelings about it. But that sometimes I... I think I can identify myself sometimes there. Life is happening. Losses are so prevalent that we take on that position of, I am just a victim. What, how should we handle loss? 
how should we handle failure? If I look at the Bible, I see a lot of heroes. I see people that we aspire to be like them. People like Paul. I mean, so strong in his faith. If you go to the Old Testament, we elevate Moses to the position of a hero. We look at Abraham, we look at David, we look at all those figures. But I have a, maybe a, a sad truth. All of them were losers. And all of them were winners. Each one of them had somewhere in his or her life a moment of losing. Of course, they had the moments of winning. That's why they're heroes. The problem is just this. When I don't deal with my losses effectively, my losses becomes, become me. And I say to myself, you are a loser. It defines my identity. It defines who I am. And as a loser, if I, if I take on that identity, it becomes part of who I am. I go through life as the victim. I go through life believing myself, believing that I am not someone who can make a difference, who can make this here, or who can contribute to this here or to my circumstances as a winner, as someone victorious. If I look at Paul, and we read in 1 Corinthians this afternoon, but there's another text that is also so valuable. If I read Paul's account to the Romans, he says there, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I love it. Through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. What does it mean? You see, not con conquerors. Conqueror goes into an enemy field and he conquers them, coming back, and he's just a conqueror. But what Paul means here is you go into the enemy's territory, you conquer, and you make profit from that. You bring something back. And that is where the, t the, the uh, title of our sermon comes from. Sometimes you win, and sometimes you learn. The English idiom says sometimes you lose. But sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, and that is where you have to make room for losses. But if it's only a loss, I become a loser. If I don't learn from the loss, the loss becomes me and I become the loss. And there I go back to what Paul says. Paul says, in all these things, he, he named a list of things, even death. And he says, in all of this, we are more than conquerors. We are people learning from the loss. We are people learning from what is conquered. And it becomes a mindset. It becomes a heart set. But the, the thing is not that it's in my own might, in my own, in my own doing. But it says, through him who loved us. And last week, during the baptism service, we spoke about the baptism of Jesus. And after his baptisms, baptism, he heard the voice from heaven, You are my beloved. You see, if I have the beloved, and if I hear the voice of God that you are the beloved, in that in that beautiful circle of love, that inner circle of love, I become the beloved. And as a beloved, I cannot say to myself, you're a loser. 
I become a winner because I have someone with me and he is the God of the universe. He is the strong and mighty God. He is the conqueror of death and destruction. And I become the winner. So how can I learn from losing? How can I learn from not winning the times that I don't win? Because this is the bad news. There are times that you are not going to win during this year. There are times that you're going to fail. There are times that you have to deal with loss. The first one, I have to realize that losses, losings, and failures are part of life. Sometimes we, we resist all this so much. And once we lost something or we lose, we get that B minus or that C plus instead of the A plus. We flog ourselves all the time. We are so hard on ourselves. One thing about this is that we don't realize, we don't always realize as a fact of life that there will be losses. You see, life is a succession of losses. When we, when we enter into this life, we enter already with the loss of the warmth and comfort of the womb that nurtured us for nine months. And then in our childhood, we're making that distinction, that, that loss from, from being close to mama to be our, on our own. That's a crisis moment. As a child, we lose our favorite toys. We lose friends. We lose days dedicated to, to playing and exploration when we go to school. And then it's Hagwan. And then it's middle school and high school. And then it's university. We go through a process of losses, things that we must lose. In the course of our adult lives, we lose jobs, we lose our positions, and our self-esteem may take a beating. We lose money, we miss opportunities, maybe fail marriages, fail relationships. We lose family and friends, not to talk about the physical losses as you grow older, you cannot do what, what you did 20, 30 years ago. And then final, the final loss is of ourselves, death, right? But the losses we face, the problem is that we can get stuck in those losses. And as a student said to me this week, I was asking her, she was... I think she's a straight A student, A plus student, and somehow she got an A minus or a B plus for her, and she was devastated. And as we went down a bit uh, deeper, she said to me, Do you know, my past, all the A minuses and all the C pluses of my past are like rocks, and I'm carrying them, I'm, I'm pulling them. And she said, my fear for tomorrow is like this big rock that I have to push. So I, I pull and I push all the time. I, I'm not getting anywhere. All of you have lost something, I'm pretty sure. Maybe some of your losses are incomprehensible. And it's, 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 so, it's so painful even to think about that. And one of the things that you might realize is that you are carrying, you are pulling all these losses from years and years. You're pulling all these losses with you. And as you're pulling it with you, trying to get up this hill, and here in front of you is tomorrow's losses, tomorrow, the anticipation of tomorrow, and you're pushing, 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 and you're not getting anywhere. And at the end... It's for us easier to count our losses instead of our blessings. And we get stuck right in the middle. And then these losses go to our heads. It defeats us. It defines us. 
and we can't get ahead. And we sit right in front, awaiting this year with, with tre trembling, and say, oh God, what are you going to send me this year? I can't face more C minuses, A minuses, whatever is the loss you might face. Because all the losses and all the failures have so piled up in our lives. So how shall we, how shall we go around? What shall we do with all of this? John Maxwell says, we want success, but we should instead train for losses. Wallace Hamilton echoed this when he wrote in a magazine, the increase of suicides, alcoholics, and even some forms of nervous breakdowns is evidence that many people are training for success when they should be training for failure. Because we don't like failure, we hate it. At the same time, we get so caught up in our mistakes. William Ward says, man like a bridge was designed to carry the load for a moment, not the combined weight of a year at all at once. You're like a bridge, and if the bridge is too heavy, it's going to break. That is where we get at this point. We have a choice. How shall we deal with that? The first to deal with that, we need to know that life is filled with losses. The second then here is mourn your losses. That's one of the things that we don't want to do. We, we pile them up and we get so caught up in that. Either we push it away or we merge with it. When we push it away, we, we try to ignore it, we try to put it here uh, somewhere, but we're always aware of that. And we work so hard in pushing it away that we can't get to do anything else. Or we merge so with it that it becomes us. It creates our lives. When we have a loss, Go through the pain of the loss. The Psalms are full of that. In the Psalms, you get the real stories of real people in the real world. It's not a makeshift world. It's not an airy-fairy world. It's people who know what it is to suffer a loss. And they go through pain. They know what it is to feel the pain of the loss, to mourn it, to go through all the stages through that. And the stages are the same of the stages that you would go through when somebody dies. There is the, the stuntness, the depression, the, the anger. Go through that. Open up to pain. If you don't open up to pain, pain will stay and pain will grow deeper and deeper and deeper and pain will become your life. So open up, it happened. What can I learn from it? How can I make profit? How can I take this that, what, that happened to me? How can I take this and get a step higher. And that is where trust comes in. To say, I'm not alone in this. You don't have to do it all on your own. You don't have to do it, you alone in that, but you don't have to do it on your own. Because Christ who loves us. Isn't that great? So our choice is to mourn it. And once we've mourned it, to step up. To step up. 
when we mourned our, our loss, we should stop the negative self-talk, the flag flagellation of ourselves. There's a writer, uh, Kripan, Kripvananda, I hope I say it right. She says, my beloved child, break your heart no longer. Each time you judge yourself, you break your own heart. Break your own heart. The third thing, know that losses will never, never leave us the same. It will not leave you the same. Losses will change you. The way that it changes you will depend on how you handle it. When your loss becomes your identity, there's no distance. There's no way of talking to that loss. There's no way of getting perspective to that loss. But ask the question, what does it want to teach me? And Loyola, Ignatius Loyola says, we can only learn when we are ready to learn. So you have to open up. What does it want to teach me? And what can I do through this loss to grow and to make that into something valuable, a victory? In 1995, Jerry Stackhouse, <clears throat> he was a sports person, and he said the following. People ask him about his, um, his career. He was an absolute great winner. And they, they ask him, what, what, is your, what is your secret? And he said the following. Win and forget. Lose and forget. Don't be defined by your winnings or your lo losses. So I want to conclude with a story. It's a story actually of a Greek legend. It tells of an athlete during the Greek Olympic Games. And this athlete was training for years and years for this event. And when the great day of the event happens, he participated, and he did his absolute best, but he came in second. See, A minus. Came in second. He was devastated. So the story goes on that the crowds went wild for the person who won this. They forgot about the second one. And they went wild, and they even erected a huge statue of marble for this person. And this guy who came in second, he was, he was devastated. He was just taken aback. And he, he had this self-talk, and the self-talk was mixed with envy, mixed with hate, mixed with the identity, I'm a loser, I, 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 just, I just didn't do it. So it ate away at him. He couldn't think of anything else but his defeat and his hatred. And every day he had to pass the statue of this winner. So he decided he's going he's gonna to do something to this statue. So he tried to destroy it. And every night he went to the statue and he chiseled at his base to make the base weak. So every night he went there make, with a chisel, and then one night, it was just too much for him, and he took a hammer, and he swung the hammer angrily at the statue. And the story went on. The statue fell, but it fell on him, and it crushed him. He has turned his loss into a major catastrophe. And some of us do the same. We take our losses, we hate it. We chisel away. We are so occupied with those losses. We are so taken 
in with the loss becomes so powerful. We fight it and then we hate it. And then at some point it falls on us. Learn from it. Acknowledge it. But know what Paul says. We are more than victories. We are more than conquerors. That's your identity. That's your identity. I'm a conqueror. I'm not a victim. And may God help us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.